In many markets, firms like to merge their businesses. In that way, they get economies in production that lower costs and raise profits. They also get a greater share of the market, which may give them power to raise prices. So in most countries, governments have powers to stop mergers if they feel the consumers will not benefit from them. One such industry is the retail food chain, where the larger stores supply ever higher proportions of the market. The top three in the UK have over 45% of the market. In France, it's around 40%, and in Germany, around 50%. The figure here in the States is only just over 20%. And the reason for that much lower figure is the aggressive anti-merger policy that the US administration follows. It's much harder for larger organizations to merge. The decision as to whether to allow a merger to take place is based upon what is known as the Herfindahl Index. And the Herfindahl Index is a simple use of the idea of powers. Let's see how it's calculated. The Herfindahl Index is based on the idea that large firms have a power in the marketplace much greater than is suggested by looking at their market share. And we emphasize that importance by squaring, that is raising to the power of two, each of the market shares of the firms in the industry and then adding them together. So the formula we have is sigma si squared, where sigma means the sum of. S is the firms in the market's percentage share. And I indicates each firm in turn. So we set I equal to one, then two, then three, and so on to the N firms in the industry. So here's an example. We have an industry with three firms where the market shares are one firm has 50% of the market and each of the other two has 25% each. So the Herfindahl index is then 50 squared. Remember the first firm has got 50% of the market. 50 squared plus 25 squared plus 25 squared. That is to say 2,500 plus 625 plus 625. And that comes to 3,750. And that number reflects the market power of the firms in the industry. Notice what we're doing by squaring the market shares. The firm, which is twice as large as the other two, now has a weight of importance of four times as large as each of the others. 2,500 being four times as much as 625. Now notice something important here. What we've done is squared each of the market shares and then added them up. That's not the same as adding up the market shares and then squaring the result. That would give 50 plus 25 plus 25 is 100, which if we then squared would give us 10,000. Notice that this is not the same as adding the shares and then squaring the answer. If we were to do that, we would clearly get up to 100 because all firms between them must have 100% of the market. And then if we had 100 squared, that would give us 10,000. And we should only be getting 10,000 if we have one firm, which is a monopoly in the industry. So the important thing is to square each of the market shares first and then sum them. Now let's look at the effect of a merger. Suppose the two smaller firms were to merge. What would our Herfindahl index show us now? Well, we'd have 50 squared. Now the two smaller firms have merged, so it's plus 50 squared, which comes to 5,000. Now clearly 5,000 is larger than 3,750. That is to say the index is showing us more market power as a result of the merger. We can now measure changes in the market structure when a merger takes place. 
To produce a Herfindahl index, we need to know the market shares of all the firms. But to calculate changes as the result of a merger, we do not. Suppose we don't know all the market shares of all the UK supermarkets, but we know that Tesco's have 30% of the market and Sainsbury's have got 12% of the market. So we can't calculate a Herfindahl index for the market because we don't know the market shares of the other firms. But we could calculate the change in the Herfindahl index if Tesco's and Sainsbury's were to merge. What would the result be? The increase in the Herfindahl index is given as 30 plus 12 squared minus, in brackets, 30 squared plus 12 squared. That is to say, 1,764 minus 1,044, which gives us 720. So the merger of Tesco's and Sainsbury's would increase the Herfindahl index by 720. We've been able to calculate that even if we don't know the Herfindahl index for the whole industry. So in conclusion, we can see that the Herfindahl index is a very useful way of measuring the effect of mergers if we believe that these weightings are appropriate. And certainly in the States, the Herfindahl index is the centerpiece of making decisions about merger policy.